WWE 2K24 is about to be out real soon, so here's everything you need to know about this year's game. Let's start with the biggest match type of the year, Special Guest Referee. They've done an amazing job bringing this back, merging all the cool aspects of the older games like Here Comes the Pain and later titles such as WWE 2K14. But before I explain exactly what that means, let's get the bad news out of the way. The Special Guest Referee match type is only limited to one-on-one -on -one matches, okay? I, I said it, all right, I, I did it. So Take deep breaths, you know, just, ah, oh, just relax. Okay, we're good. Let's go ahead because trust me, it gets better. First, let's talk about the fact that you can create your own special referee attire. And the way it's done is very similar to creating a manager attire. Just go to superstar creation and select whatever you're creating as the referee attire. And that's pretty much it. But if you don't want to do that, the game will automatically give the guest referee a classic attire. So that's the classic ref shirt, the black pants. But if you look at the wrestlers who've gotten this automatic attire, you'll see that they have their armbands, their elbow pads. Ads. In other words, anything they wear on their arms, they don't get removed, they actually stay. Even when they get an automatic referee attire, which is an interesting detail. And if these two options don't suit you, then you can even choose for the special guest referee to use their ring slash manager attire too. The special referees will get an entrance as well, even if you choose a manager. Now I've seen Paul Heyman do a very generic referee entrance and he looks extremely weird without a suit i gotta tell you anyhow everything that i've just talked about happens before the match after the bell rings however as the guest referee you can literally perform every single action an npc referee can in the game there is a referee meter on the top left and it will judge you it will judge you hard on all your actions like counting the pins too slow too fast or right on time and it will go up or down based upon your performance. As someone is getting pinned, you can go down and check for the pin, aka get into the position to start counting. Besides the obvious fast count and whatnot, you can mess with one of the wrestlers in the match by calling a rope break at any time they go for a pin or submission, even when there is no rope break. And when a wrestler is in a submission, you can even do a screw job which is an awesome feature, but you will need a finisher store to be able to call it, so keep that in mind. But again, you have to watch for that bar on the top left, as other things will mess with it too. For example, if someone brings a weapon in the ring in an ODQ match, as the referee, you need to take that weapon from their hands and throw it out of the ring as soon as possible. The game even has these clear indications with exclamation marks to make sure you understand exactly what the current problem is. Again, it could be a weapon left in the ring. It could be a turnbuckle that is left exposed. Of course, if the wrestlers don't let you take the weapon from them and hit you or the other participant in the match or do any other illegal activity, you can go right ahead and disqualify them. If they go on the top rope, you can warn them to come back down. If they go outside, you can start counting. And while counting, you can do the animation where the ref goes in between the top and the middle rope to signal the wrestlers to come back in. And of course, you have the good old, hey, no, don't go out there animation as you're seeing right now. I'm sure you've seen this one a ton of times. But man, all this to say, being a referee is not too easy, is it? Well, this could get even more difficult because managers. You'll have to watch for their antics too and hey if there's someone who you particularly dislike you can kick them off the match at any time you don't have to wait till the managers mess with you you know what as a referee you have the power to do that or here's the best option if you're sick of it all you can just switch to wrestler mode because there are two modes in this match type for the special guest referee the first is the referee mode of course where you can do everything that I just mentioned. But with just the press of a button, you can switch to the wrestler mode, which will basically turn your control scheme to the normal one. And you can do all your moves, all your finishers, and just go create an insane amount of chaos. Speaking of finishers, one of the questions I had was, wait, as a special guest referee, how do you get these finishers, these signatures built up? And before getting to the next fact, I gotta give a shout out to Assemble specifically, as he's the one who told me about this. In 2K24, there's a new way to get momentum as a referee. The better and the more fair you are at your job as a referee, the more your momentum bar will start to fill up. So if you count the pins properly, if you check the submissions properly, that's going to translate into a finisher. But man, if you don't want to be fair, if you just want to cause chaos 
And if you ignore your duties as a referee far too much, the bar on the top left that I talked about, it will empty out and a new referee will start making their way to the ring. While that's happening, you still have a chance to do anything you want, including counting the pin and finishing the match. So that by depleting doesn't mean game over for you. And what's even cooler is that even after another referee takes over your spot, you don't exit the arena. You're instead relegated into a manager position. You can hang out outside of the ring, do whatever you want, or you can go in and mess with the match even more after that. But that's gonna be the finish line for you after a while. Because eventually your replacement referee will get furious with you and they will eject you from ringside, get you out of the arena. And that's pretty much going to be the final thing you can do as a former special referee. After that, you can spectate the match. That means you can use all the cool camera angles or you can assign your controller to another wrestler and continue participating in the match. So as you can see, it's basically a way more detailed version of what we had in 2K14. But what makes this the best iteration of the match type we've ever seen is the fact that you can actually disable that special referee meter on the top left completely and do whatever you please. But you can only toggle this option on or off before starting the match. And there's even more to talk about when it comes to special referee. You can, of course, make the matches for a title, for two titles if you want. Or you can put the money in the bank on the line. And my favorite thing has to be the fact that the AI will pay attention to their allies and rivals as the special referee. Now, as you know, in 2K23, the AI won't attack their teammates in battle royale slash rumbles unless they're the only two, three, whatever left in the ring. Well, in the special referee match type, the AI will, for example, do a faster count when an ally goes for a cover and they may end up doing a slow count for a rival or they might just straight up ignore their pin attempt. So in the end, although this mode is limited to only one-on-one -on -one matches, 2K did an outstanding job bringing this mode back into the series. So kudos where it's due. And from one match type to another, I would like to call this a sleeper hit. I did not think the gauntlet match would be as cool as it is in 2K24. Now there are three types of gauntlet matches, the normal gauntlet, the eliminator gauntlet, and the turmoil gauntlet. In each of these versions, you can have up to four or 30 wrestlers participate. So in the normal gauntlet match, two wrestlers will start in the ring. As one person is eliminated, another will come in, and the last man standing is the winner. In a turmoil gauntlet match, it will be one versus all. One wrestler will have to go up against a team of wrestlers. And that one wrestler has to eliminate each and every single one of those members of the team one by one in order to win the match. If he loses to any one of them, the match is over. So there you go. Crank it up to the legend difficulty. Pick a superstar with a low overall, which in this game, <laughs> this year, it's not going to be too tough to do. And there you go, man. You have a great challenge. And speaking of fun, I gotta say Gauntlet Eliminator just sounds awesome. It's basically like a normal Gauntlet match, but with eight people in the ring. It is also very similar to a Royal Rumble match, but the difference is you can enable pins, you can enable submissions, you can disable either one. And again, you can still have 30 people come out. So the match, I believe, starts with two people and then you have a countdown and more and more people join up until there's eight. And then whenever somebody is eliminated through whatever means, another person comes in until we get rid of all 29 and the last man wins. And here's the thing. Like I said, you can disable submissions and pins. You can mess with the rules and make it so that anyone who gets it with a finisher gets eliminated. Maybe first blood is the elimination. And you can even confine every single person to the ring. They cannot go outside at all, so there you go. For any New Japan fans out there, you can probably do a over-the-top battle royale with submissions and pinfalls included too. And all I gotta say to that is, I like it. Now, in these gauntlet matches, as a new wrestler make their entrance after an elimination, they simply appear at the top of the stage and they don't come to ringside through the gorilla position. And they usually just walk to the ring. Now in a normal or an eliminator gauntlet, your star after pinning or submitting somebody, they'll celebrate, do a little animation. So you'll have to stay in the ring until the other person gets in there and then you can start fighting. But if it's an eliminator gauntlet, there's eight people, there's chaos. You can go ahead while 
the new wrestler is walking into the ring you can just interrupt their entrance and start punching them hitting them but yeah in the other two versions your wrestler will just like taunt and wait for the other person to come into the ring so that's how the entrances are handled after an elimination but what about the people who need to walk backstage well what happens to them is that they slowly walk to the titan tron and then they go to the left or to the right they usually end up going through the titan tron like literally just going in instead of taking the actual exit but it's cool because they disappear from our view and then they kind of like vanish whereas in the royal rumble matches for example they do the same walk the exact same animation right up to the titan tron and once they get to the top of the stage they just disappear as we can still see them so we can see them vanish perfectly i don't know why they didn't do the same thing in the rumbles where yeah the rest of just go through the titan tron and then they vanish right i would assume it'd just be copy paste it wouldn't be too difficult but hey that's a question for another day now let's get to the next match type as you know the casket match returns and it looks quite similar to the ambulance match and the biggest thing about this match type you need to know is that there are a decent number of ways you can engage with the casket when you're inside the ring for example you can hammer whip someone towards it and they'll take a huge Shawn michaels-esque bump to the outside when the casket is closed you can open the casket when you're walking on the apron or by getting out of the ring and going to either the top or the bottom side of it once the casket is open if you hammer with someone from the ring again they will of course bump right into the casket you can go ahead and close the lid from there now other ways of getting them into that casket include doing a carry move over the ropes from my observations though that only has one animation and it's the one you're seeing right now you can strike slash grapple someone standing on the apron and cause them to fall in there while you're inside of the ring yourself if both of you are standing on the apron you can strike your opponent to cause them to fall in the casket as well and if you're the one that's on the apron and your opponent's inside the ring you can grapple them to do a ddt i've heard people say that there's a suplex animation as well where you will obviously put your opponent in the casket that way or you can let the opponent do all the work stand on the apron yourself and wait for them to rush towards you for a grapple or a strike as you hit them with a reversal and bam you can just watch them fall right in as you get out of the way to the casket from outside the ring with the carry system you can power bomb or use an aa to dunk people in there as well the carry system also lets you power bomb people on the casket when the door is closed and again with the carry system if you approach the casket from the up or the bottom side you can do a snake eyes animation on there oh and don't forget about the fact that you can either strip people to the sides of the casket too and you can do a grappling attack if you want where your wrestler will smash the opponent's head onto the casket instead of just throwing them in again very much like the ambulance match of course there are a lot of ways the wrestlers will maneuver over or near the casket while getting in and out of the ring themselves so 2k was definitely not lazy when it comes to animating all of that once someone is in the casket and you're trying to shut that door down you're gonna need to deal with the same mini game that you have for the ambulance match and every single one of the submissions in the entire game of course i'm talking about the ever persistent button mashing mini game and sadly you cannot dive onto your opponents if they're laying in the casket from anywhere as you can see here when you try to do it from the top rope, your wrestler just sort of goes, I don't get paid enough for that, and they refuse to do it. So that was all you needed to know about the match types. Let's go ahead and talk about some more general facts now. The action figure Code Rhodes. Yes, there is an action figure of Code Rhodes, by the way, in the game, just like how we had John Cena last year. Well, that figure can bleed, technically. He will even have splatters on the ground, but the blood does not show up on his model. In my last facts video, I mentioned the renewed rope bounce animations for all wrestlers. I noticed there are superstar specific ones too. For example, Rey Mysterio bounces from the second rope as he does in real life, which is a great touch by 2K. We finally got to see the fireball, which is one of the six new paybacks this year. Here's how it looks like. It also leaves burn marks on the face of the wrestlers unfortunate enough to be at the receiving end of this payback. In the same vein, the poison mist for Shinsuke has a red color instead of green. I know it's a simple color change but it makes a big difference if you're a fan of Shinsuke especially. And let me tell you, Shinsuke has been updated a lot this year. We're talking new hair, 
new beard, new attire, and probably some more that I'm missing. Moreover, some of the other wrestlers have the mist payback too, and they can have the mist in different colors. It doesn't have to be red. Now, although some people say it's not enough, and I hear you, believe me, I do, 2K24 boasts the biggest NXT roster to date, with tons of NXT wrestlers already in the base game, and then even more incoming like Lyra Valkyrie with the season pass. Now, I'm sure you've all heard about it, so I'm gonna keep it short. This year, we have an awesome season pass that includes wrestlers and managers like CM Punk. And it's coming out a month after the game releases, by the way. Jade Cargill. Well, she's gonna take a little longer. In fact, we're talking about September. That's right. Jade Cargill and a whole bunch of other wrestlers will be released in September. But you got Lex Luger, Mr. Perfect, Lyra Valkyrie. I think that's how you actually <laughs> say her name. And even people like Great Muta. So lots of wrestlers, great range, though we're not going to be talking about the Pat McAfee pack. All right, we're not, we're not going to do it. Moving on, we have the entirety of the roster. Well, except one name and their attributes revealed. And the disrespect 2K has shown this year has gotten me mad, probably gotten you mad, all the other fans and the wrestlers themselves as well. They said in the last game, man, everybody was at a 90. Now in this one, we wanted to make it so if you're 90 or if you have an attribute over 90, it should mean something. And that's why you're seeing all these low ratings this year. But that's still not a good excuse for some of the ratings like, for example, Kurt Angle at an 89. Kurt Angle at an 89. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, the list goes on and on. And guess what? Attributes may matter more than ever. Because now if a wrestler has less than 85 attribute points, they will not be able to use resiliency as a payback. <laughs> okay, so speaking of not being able to use things, remember how I just mentioned that we got nearly all of the roster revealed? Well, there is one name that's missing, and we're talking about the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar. It is not confirmed 100% as of yet, but it's looking more and more like we're going to have Brock Lesnar in the showcase mode, maybe potentially for a storyline or two in my eyes mode, we're going to play against him, maybe even play as him in the showcase. But that's going to be it. He's not going to be an unlockable. That is the only way you're going to be able to access Brock Lesnar. Because it's too late at the development stage to remove Brock Lesnar. I mean, the game is coming out, what, in less than a week now? But yeah, that's a spicy topic. Let's move on to something cooler. Dominic Mysterio. Not only did he get some love by Rhea Ripley, but he's got a lot of love from 2K this year as well, man. We're talking new hair, new attire, new title entrance by himself, together with Rhea Ripley, and then with the rest of the Judgment Day. And on top of all of that, he even has a new title victory animation. Dominic Mysterio might literally be the most updated star on the roster, and I don't hate it. I've also noticed that Rhea Ripley has a new title victory animation too. Double title ladder matches are confirmed for one-on-one -on -one and even multi-man matches. This particular piece of information, I found it from Assemble's video. Again, a huge shout out to him for reaching out to the devs and confirming this one. Also, of course, I'm gonna take this moment to tell you to check out after this video, of course, <laughs> every single creator you're seeing on screen right now, they are all amazing. And I can't thank them enough for providing us with such awesome footage, content, and knowledge, man. You guys rock. Now, moving on to tag team matches. Here's something that makes me smile because they're going to be a lot less annoying this year. First of all, you can give commands to your AI partners using the D-pad, while you yourself are the legal partner. These commands go as follows. Remove the turnbuckle. Set up a table. Pass a weapon. Attack the opposing team's illegal partner. And this reminds me of what we had in Here Comes the Pain, where if you taunted it in the ring, your tag partner would get in there and start causing some mayhem. So again, they brought something that's old back to the fold, but they made it gold. <laughs> there you go. There's, some, uh, there's a couple of rhymes for you. The second change now I want to touch on is called the illegal tag partner debuff. And I think it's amazing because with this debuff, any of the tag partners, if they get in the ring, and leave once. They won't be able to come back until they get tagged in the match and become legal. That's when this debuff is gonna reset. So this means that they're not gonna be able to get in there every single time you go for a pin or for a submission. No, they only get one shot and this will heavily reduce the AI just getting in there for every single pin and making these matches tedious to play. 
And if you love simulating matches, I mean, AI versus AI tag team matches were a no-go for so many years now. It might actually be fun to simulate them because, hey, they're not gonna go on for two hours. And when I say two hours, by the way, I'm not exaggerating. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Oh my god. Lita finally got fixed. I can't believe my eyes. End of an era, ladies and gentlemen. End of an era. And it is finally confirmed that we have three in-ring announcers now in the game. We're talking Samantha Irvin, Alicia Taylor, and Mike Rome. Unfortunate part is that they're locked to specific arenas. So for example, Alicia Taylor will only be available in NXT arenas. Here's another small detail that really matters. Samantha does the Chelsea green thing. And from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, Chelsea Green! Let's go. Thanks to the showcase mode, we will have the 2015 versions of both Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. I'm especially happy that we get 2015 Seth Rollins because, I mean, let's be honest. That was his prime, man. That was his prime. This screenshot heavily implies, and I say implies because 2K themselves haven't come out and 100% confirmed that this is the case, but it implies that the attires you unlock in my faction can be used in all other modes too. We have the return of flash photography, as if we're back in the early 2000s. I mean, it's not really realistic. We don't see it nowadays, but man, it takes me back. So you know what? I like it. But let me know what you think. We have all four faces of Mick Foley. These being Dude Love, Mankind, Cactus Jack, and Mick Foley himself as a manager. All finisher animations can be set up as a super finish. You just need to press one button to enable or disable if that was gonna be a super finish or not. You can use Slim Jims as a weapon. They work just like the candlesticks do. The same exact thing goes for guitars, except they break in spectacular fashion after one hit. The Mike and Zelina slippers share the same animation set. I believe you can add the soda cans into that conversation as well. There are three new double title entrances, rounding up to a four because in 2K23, we only had one. You can also now choose your double championship victory animation this year. And there are seven options. One of those seven options, number seven specifically, is Daniel Bryan's double title victory animation from WrestleMania 30. They probably had this entrance in the vault and said, let's just bring it back. <laughs> kind of crazy to see. We learned of more wrestlers that can pull down their straps, but again, only a select few wrestlers can do this as far as we know. And Brian Williams did confirm that we cannot give this to our creative wrestlers. The evening slash night arenas are back. There seem to be one or two WrestleMania arenas that will have these versions. I forgot this here, but I'm gonna read it anyways. You can use any wrestler, manager, as special referee, or even choose the official refs in the game if you'd like and play as them. <laughs> yeah, this should have been in the beginning of the video, oopsie. Roman has a new entrance motion with Solo and Paul, which looks awesome, but he still uses the Big Dog era animations from years ago for all his singles entrances and victories. Honestly, it's super baffling to me. Just copy paste this new animation you're seeing right now for a singles title entrance and problem solved. I mean, here Roman doesn't even interact with any other bloodline. So it'd just be perfect. I, I don't know why we still have the Big Dog animations for Roman Reigns. Like he is your main champion. What are you doing 2K? In my previous facts video, I said tired moves only happen on certain moves when you land flat on your back. But look at this badass animation with Solo. So the moves that work with this feature is actually a lot more than I initially noticed. There are also four versions of Bray Wyatt in the game. We're talking about The Fiend, The Firefly Funhouse, Bray Wyatt, another NWO version from his showcase match with Cena, and finally, the cult leader version of Wyatt, which is definitely my favorite. Now let's talk about my rise a little bit, only a little bit because gameplay wise, it looks almost 100% the same. But the male storyline starts big. My character's voice acting seem really bad though, I'm not gonna lie. Other than that, at least the story, like I said, looks promising. The bump makes it debut in the series and it's actually a pretty awesome touch. It looks really well done and it's used as a narrative tool 
to summarize what's going on with our wrestlers in the storylines of my rise kathy kelly also made it into the game that's interesting maybe she plays a part in my rise as well there's a couple of new titles for my rise and judging by their look and their name we could be having another time jump situation in the story like we did back in 2k20 or i don't know maybe an alternate universe we'll see soon we do know however one of the titles is related to the beginning of the woman's my rise the objectives during the matches are usually not too specific it tells you to damage someone for a certain amount and then it leads into a cutscene after you're done this cutscene is of course completely in game they really should have used this exact same method for showcase too but hey that's another topic and that's gonna be it for my rise because anything else i'll say will be spoilers and i want you to go into this mode as fresh as you can possibly be create a superstar mode now has a quick save feature which lets you save at any point of your creation so if the game crashes or you make a big mistake or whatever you won't need to start from the very beginning that is huge there are many new hairstyles added to the creation suit this year and they're mostly from wrestlers who were already in the game like alexa your sky we can go on and on with these they did this last year too and don't worry for the male wrestlers as well and i think it's great because the hair models that come from this look so high quality they look great so i love to see it also i'm sure you already noticed but the background you see in the superstar creation suit is changed to an empty arena with your wrestlers standing in the ring the best part is that everything is kind of dark meaning your eyes won't melt off looking at a bright screen as you're working away at your creation for hours upon hours unfortunately the same hundred wrestlers and thousand logo limit returns this is bad news especially because shout out to dre 41 gaming i learned that the thousand logo limit is actually worse than it sounds if you have really high quality logos you don't even need to hit a thousand before the game caps your limit so what in the blue hell you know you could have like 800 logos with their super high quality a bunch of megabytes and the game says you know what I'm, i know you didn't hit a thousand logos but you're done already so i definitely understood why people always complained about this thousand logo situation and now i see it's even worse like so much worse than i ever thought it was that's why they definitely have to get on this and fix it as soon as possible you can put championships on the line for royal rumble matches once again and yes you can also do double bout matches uh, the crowd has some new call outs during entrances like here in this entrance for some reason they're roasting the hell out of bailey the wrestlemania 39 arena is very cool looking but the titan trons are all messed up as you can see they're not lined up at all and because of the taller rampway sometimes the camera angles and entrances can get messed up so these are two other things that 2k definitely needs to fix up it's not all bad however at the wrestlemania 39 stage you can go to the very sides of the stage thanks to its unique design if you liked how the menu looked in 2k22 and 23 you will like how it looks in 24 as well as you can see it's basically the same but with noticeable improvements like crispier looking ui in general and actual ring slash arena at the background and in my opinion the most important thing is that the play button is in the middle and is going to be the first thing you can select once you get into the game instead of the showcase mode like it was last year which it really didn't make sense so nice one 2k universe mode is virtually the same however the ui is updated for the actions and it makes things look a lot more clearer but that's about it it almost feels as if the devs have forgotten about this mode that it ever exists to be honest with you as they've been doing for the better part of a decade so not really surprised here just just disappointed my gm has a bit more meat on its bones though we have four new gms teddy long paul Heyman, william regal ted dibiase for the mode now available you can train wrestlers now as well for example if there's a wrestler you like and you want to invest in them this will help you do that in fact you can even change their class so you should have no obstacles in creating a new star or even just improving the compatibility of your roster and last but not least all of the new match types that are available in 2k24 are also available for use in my gm 
and the universe mode as well. And there you have it, folks. This was quite possibly everything you needed to know about WWE 2K24. Or wait, was it? Because there is a ton more that I didn't touch on in this video. So you got to check out these two other videos that you're seeing on screen right now, which combined make over 135 more facts you need to know about 2K24. All I got to say is enjoy and I'm getting out of here.